brief time, magic ruled my life. I bought boxes of starters and boosters from my friendly local game shop the minute they went on sale. I had a black and blue deck, a green and red deck, a blue and white deck. I even had a vicious black and red deck that had just 51 cards into it, thanks to the abuse of Dark Ritual. <laughs> right around the Ice Age expansion, though, I stopped having fun playing Magic in tournaments because it had become an arms race. Whoever had the most money and time to seek out the most powerful cards would usually win the game. Unless I was willing to keep buying new cards every few months, I saw a future where the decks I had now would be obsolete, and I wouldn't be able to play competitively with anyone. Because I was never very good at the game anyway, it didn't make sense to me to commit to that kind of investment. So I put my cards into storage, and didn't play again, until, <laughs> flash forward to 2005. My son Nolan came home from high school one day, and he asked me if I had ever heard of this game called Magic. <laughs> That some of his friends were playing. Sure, I said. I used to play the. Uh, I used to play it all the time. <laughs> I still have my cards if you'd like to see them. I went into the garage and I took my big box of games off the shelf. Inside, in a plastic box with tape around the edges to seal it, were hundreds of magic cards. Wow, that's a lot of cards, Nolan said. Yeah, I had a lot of disposable income when I was younger. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Something we don't have now. <laughs> I took the box into the house and opened it. Most of the cards were organized by type, but a few decks were still intact. Nolan looked over the cards. This kind of looks like the Pokemon card game, he said. <laughs> yeah, it's like that, but not lame. <laughs> I should point out that I absolutely love Pokemon on Nintendo. Uh, uh, even though I'm terrible at it. Um, and uh, I could talk about Pokemon for half an hour now, but I won't. Um, I pulled out two decks and I taught him how to play. Nolan caught magic fever like a stowaway on a plague ship. I was thrilled to have something that we could do together. So I naturally encouraged his madness. He started taking my cards with him to school and using them to successfully wipe the floor with his peers, who apparently didn't know how to defend against the old ways. <laughs> Little high school bitches don't know how to pay the iron price. <laughs> Then one day he came home very upset. These idiots at school just print out cards online. Fake cards that they got from websites. And they put them in sleeves and think they can play with them. Well, that's complete bullshit, I said. <laughs> Don't tell your mom I said bullshit. I'm not playing with them anymore, he said. I totally understand that. I'll still play with you, though. And you could always go play at the game shop. The game shop smells, he said. <laughs> I had no retort. <laughs> okay, well, if you ever change your mind, I'll be happy to take you there. We played almost daily for a few weeks, but Nolan eventually got distracted by something new and different that didn't involve spending lots of time with his lame stepfather. <laughs> Flash forward to 2007. Nolan found interest in magic again, though he enjoyed deck building more than actually playing. One day he asked me to take him to the game shop to play, and he came home with a rather amusing story. So I went to play with this guy, and when he saw my cards, he got real upset that they were in sleeves because they're so old and apparently valuable. He asked me where I got them, and, told, and I told him that they were my stepdad's cards. Nolan didn't ever put his cards into sleeves as a matter of pride as a way of showing his opponents that he was using actual cards, not printouts like those douchey kids at his school. <laughs> he actually refused to keep playing with me until I put the cards into sleeves. <laughs> he did his version of the comic book guy's voice. Those cards are far too valuable. I will not engage in a contest with you until they are protected. <laughs> Um, for the record, uh, I hate sleeves. They make it so fucking hard to shuffle cards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just, I, I 
just don't, I just don't get it. Guys, it's a way for game companies to take more of your money without giving you something worthwhile in return. Say no to sleeves! <laughs> anyway, back to the story. I laughed. So he actually gave me sleeves. Put your cards in them so we could play. No one started going to the game shop three or four times a week, spending his allowance on cards and building up several formidable decks, including a sliver deck and a zombie deck that, while apparently not tournament legal, were feared and loathed by the regulars at the game shop. <laughs> Around this time, I started looking at magic again, and I rebuilt a few of my old decks from memory. I still wasn't very good at the game, and in the arms race portion of the game, Nolan had nukes and I had a board with a nail in it. <laughs> But it was still a lot, of fun, a lot of fun to play. Flash forward to about a year ago, I got my hands on a box of Time Spiral.